Wow, what a full house. I love it. Thank you all for coming today to worship Emmanuel, God with us. If you didn't know this, Christmas is all about Jesus. I know you did. That's why you're here. Because we are here to celebrate God loving us in such a way that he sent Jesus to be born in a manger and to live a perfect life and then to die for us so that we could be made right with God. Now, there's a lot of things that we can receive this time of year. I think you would agree. A lot of times we can receive a little bit of stress this time of year. Things can be busy and crazy. There's definitely things that happen. There's sickness that happens, right? There's reminders of things we've lost throughout the year. There's a lot of things that we can receive, but there are certain gifts that God wants us to receive. And these are gifts that come to us through Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. Now, we've looked so far at receiving God's gift of hope, receiving God's gift of love, and receiving God's gift of joy. Today, we're going to talk about receiving God's gift of peace. Peace. But here's the thing. We have to choose to receive that gift. Because there's a lot of other things that we can choose that are opposite of peace. When I think of what is the opposite of peace, I think of two words in particular. One being conflict. Oh, not getting along with this person. Or there's, there's wars raging throughout the world and, and there's conflict. That's the opposite of peace. Another thing is chaos. Parents know exactly what I'm talking about. Kids are crazy. They're hyped up on, on sugar and going crazy. Oh, I want to open the gifts and everybody's falling apart. And it just doesn't seem like peace, right? It seems like chaos. But here's the thing. What if God wants us to receive his peace even when things are chaotic? Because we think of peace as the kids are in bed. I can actually have a conversation with my spouse or I can read a book or, or there's peace because people are getting along or maybe someone's moved away, right? That's what we think of. But what if God wants us to have peace even when there's conflict? What if God wants us to have peace even when there's chaos? It's not just the absence of. So what I want to encourage us to do is I want to encourage us to unwrap the gift of peace that God has for us. So we're going to unwrap the gift of peace. God says, I want you this year to have my peace no matter what. But here's the thing. We still have conflict, right? And sometimes we can unwrap conflict and we can choose conflict and reject peace. And sometimes we can choose to unwrap and, and hold on to chaos and reject peace. But here's the thing. You know we sang about Silent Night, right? Do you know that things were not peaceful the night Jesus was born? Things weren't peaceful. There was oppression from the Roman government. There was political unrest. There was conflict between humanity and God. So how was it a night of heavenly peace? Well, because it was a holy night. Because peace came to us. The prophet Isaiah, hundreds of years before Jesus was born, told us what would happen that night. And this is what he said in Isaiah 9, 6. He said, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and say this with me, Prince of Peace. And the angels when the angels declared the birth announcement of Jesus. Again, this was not a time of peace in the world. 
but peace came to the world. It was a silent night because it was a holy night because the holiness of God came in the midst of our chaos and conflict because peace is Jesus. And this is what happened on that night, Luke 2, 13 through 14. Suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace. To those whom his favor rests. Not because there was an absence of conflict. Not because there was an absence of chaos. But because peace came to us. And the reality is. Is peace is not just a symbol. Not just a hope. Peace is a person. And his name is Jesus. Peace came on that holy night. It was holy because Jesus came to us. This is what the Apostle Paul says about the person, Jesus, our peace, in 2 Thessalonians 3.16. He says, now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way. The Lord be with all of you. Now, I want to talk today briefly just three ways God wants us to receive Jesus, not just this time of year, but every time of year, and to receive Jesus, the gift of peace. And the first way, and this is on your bulletins if you have that, is to receive peace with God. You see, when the Prince of Peace came to us, when the angels declared peace on whom God's favor rests, what that means is everyone who would believe in Jesus would be able to receive the peace of God. They would be able to receive a peace that is greater than any chaos, greater than any conflict, greater than any trial of life. I know some of you have seen the bumper sticker that says this, no God, no peace, no God, no peace. And see, the reality is, is that without God, without Emmanuel coming to us, we're not going to have peace in life. Again, peace is not just the absence of conflict and chaos. Peace is God's calming, God's rest, that security in God even in the midst of chaos and conflict. And the first way is to have peace with God because the reality is, is that before Jesus died on a cross, there was peace conflict between us and God. Scripture says that we were God's enemies because of sin. His wrath was going to come on all who were consumed by sin. And honestly, that's everybody. And the only way we could be at peace with God is for Jesus to stand between us and God and be the perfect atoning sacrifice. This is what Paul writes in Romans 5, 1 through 2, about receiving peace with God. We're no longer at war or conflict with God because our sins have been redeemed. We have been justified through Christ. And this is what he says in verses 1 through 2. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. Now, kids, I know you're with us today, and, but I've been talking to the adults because when we talk about Jesus being born in a manger, and that's what Christmas is about, we also know that Jesus, the same Jesus born in a manger, is the same Jesus that died on the cross for us. So we celebrate his birth, but we also are grateful and thankful that he died to forgive us of our sins, and to make us right with God. We are no longer at war with God. We are no longer enemies of God because sin has been atoned for, has been covered, has been satisfied through the sacrifice of Jesus. The first and greatest way that we can receive peace is to receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior and to have him stand between us and God and say, you have been made right. That is the first way. And if you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, don't wait. 2018 is not guaranteed to you. Be made right with God and receive that peace that comes through Jesus Christ. The second way that God wants us to receive peace 
is to receive peace within. To receive peace within. Because the thing is, is when chaos and conflict comes into our life, it tears us up inside. We're filled with anxiety. We're filled with fear. We're filled with doubt. We're filled with anger. We're filled with disappointment. We're filled with depression. See, that's what chaos and conflict does. It creates a war inside of us. But God has given us Jesus Christ. And through Jesus Christ, we have the Holy Spirit that produces a peace within. And if you don't have that today, God wants you to have that peace, that calming, that security, to know that he is greater than anything. And even though we're sitting there and everything is just going crazy around us and everything's falling apart, we can actually be still. And rest with God because he becomes our peace within. And here's a scripture that is one of my favorites. If you don't know this scripture, I want you to write it down. I want you to be able to read this scripture, even memorize this scripture. Because this is so powerful of God's promise to us of peace within no matter what storms of life may come. And this is what the Apostle Paul says through Philippians 4, 6 through 7. He starts out by saying, do not be anxious about anything. Don't worry about anything. Well, how can that happen when there's so many things going on in life? And he goes on and he says, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And here's the promise. And the peace and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. What a powerful promise that is. Where God wants us to be calm, he wants us to have that security and trust in Jesus Christ and to have that rest no matter what's going on. Well, let me break that down a little bit because it starts out with this phrase that God's peace transcends all understanding, which means when Jesus is on the throne of our heart, when Jesus is completely covering our mind, then even when things don't make sense, when everything in our life is the opposite of peace, we can still be at peace because we have Jesus, right? It transcends all understanding. That's when people look at you and go, oh my goodness, how can you be calm right now? I'd be flipping out. I'd be going postal. There's no way, right? But the difference is, is that the Prince of Peace is guarding our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus, right? Prince of Peace is guarding our heart and our mind. And see, that's the next part. God's peace has the power to guard your heart in your minds, in Christ Jesus. Jesus has the power to bring peace to your heart, to guard it, to not let any anxiety or fear or anger or frustration or disappointment come. He guards it, and he is stronger than anything. But we have to let him guard us and then guard our minds but here's, here's the part I want to caution you, because so many times we look at this and we're like, ooh, there's a formula. See, we all want a formula. We want a quick answer. The quick answer would be, okay, I see it. Let's go back to that scripture real quick, the Philippians 4, 6 through 7. It says, don't be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition and with thanksgiving. So we're like, there's the formula. All I got to do is when I feel anxious or, or when I get upset, I just need to pray. I need to petition my request to God and be thankful. And now all of a sudden I'm going to have peace. And so we rely on those things to be the power. But here's what I'm going to tell you. Because in verse 5, right before that, Paul explains something. He says, the Lord is near. Again, peace is not, peace is not prayer. Peace is not petition. 
Peace is not thanksgiving. Peace is a person. It's Jesus. Prayer positions us to go closer to Jesus. Petitioning our request positions us to step closer to Jesus. Thanksgiving positions us to step closer to Jesus. See, peace is Jesus. The reason why Paul said the Lord is near, he says peace is near. All you have to do is to take that step towards him. So many times we just want the formula, but we miss the person. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. We will receive peace no matter what we're going through when we take those steps to invite him in and we kick out chaos. Oh, that was fun. I've never, <laughs> I've never done that before. I'm not kicking this. No, 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 no. See, when we kick that out, we're making a choice. We're saying, Jesus, I believe you're greater than what's going on right now. Jesus, I believe you're greater and I choose you. The Lord is near is an invitation. It's a promise. Through prayer, we step closer to Jesus. Through petition, Jesus, this is what's going on. I need you. We step closer to Jesus. Thanksgiving. I'm not going to focus on all the negative because I'll always miss you, Jesus. We step closer, and the result is going to be peace. It's, the result is Jesus will come in to those areas, and he will guard our heart and our mind. What a powerful promise. That is what God wants us to receive. One last thing, one last thing, and this, I, I love this, this is my favorite, is that peace is to come. Peace is to come. We have peace with God through Jesus being born in a manger, but then dying on a cross. We have peace with God because now Jesus lives in us through the Holy Spirit. And peace is when we choose Jesus and we move closer to him. But then we have peace to come because here's the thing about the manger and about the cross is that each one of those reveals the promise that Jesus will return. Christmas is that Jesus is coming back. He came, Emmanuel, God with us. And the fulfillment of that is that we will be with God. He's going to come back. And when Jesus returns, he's not going to come back as a little baby born in a manger. He's going to come back as the lion, as the victorious, victorious God that comes back and claims all those who belong to him. But at the same time, when Jesus comes back, Jesus is going to bring the judgment of God on all of those who have rejected his peace. War against evil will cease. The devil, sorry, the devil will be sent to his eternal punishment. Hell is not going to be a paradise for the devil. It is his punishment. He will be sent with all of those who have rejected the peace of God. And peace will come because all war will end against evil. But peace will also come because peace will come and take us home to be with God for eternity. That's exciting stuff. That's what Christmas reveals. Emmanuel, God came to us. But Emmanuel, he's coming again. And he's taken us to be with him. I'd like to share a scripture and then I'd like to close. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 through 18 Apostle Paul writes this, For the Lord himself, peace himself, will come down from heaven with a commanding shout. Again, this isn't no baby cry, right? A commanding shout with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet call of God. First, the Christians who have died will rise from their graves. Then together with them, we who are still alive and remain on the earth will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Here's the fullness of peace. Then we will be with the Lord forever. Forever. So encourage each other with these words. The final expression of the peace we long for is Jesus coming back. I'd like to close by showing a, a video that I think wraps up really Christmas as, as peace coming to us. 
but it's something we need to receive. We need to receive Jesus Christ, and we need to live in the victory he offers every moment of every day because that silent night was a holy night because the Prince of Peace changed our lives forever. And he will return for us to be with him forever. Together, as we worship in response, how does God want you to receive peace today? Is it peace with God for the first time, declaring Jesus as Lord and Savior? Is it peace by being able to say, God, I give you this pain, this trial, this, trial, this chaos, this stress. I take those steps to choose peace, to choose Jesus. Or is it to be able to live with that overwhelming hope that Christ is returning? How will you respond today? Let us join with you.